George Stiles has outlived every bomb disposal expert in the world. Today, he returned to his army quarters to pack for the last time with his wife, Mary. And this is the next to last moon. George and Mary Stiles can begin to live now without their most immediate fear of assassination. But the car they drive into their local pub has false number plates. Do you think we've got the right equipment or enough equipment um, to deal with all eventualities in the bomb field nowadays? Because there's more bombs than ever there were, of course. Yes. Um, well, we've got more equipment today than we've ever had. Um, in this, um, I think the United Kingdom, Great Britain, uh, uh, we lead the world in the advances that we've made in equipment uh, and their applications. Uh, but you must remember that the bomb disposer is never going to defeat the bomber. Uh, you know, you don't expect a chap to try and catch an enemy aircraft bomb before it hits the deck. Um, neither can you expect the, the bomb disposer to go uh, and sort of stop uh, every time an improvised explosive device from going off. We can do it, and we do do it when, whenever it's possible. But we're really only giving a service to a, a situation, you know, I always say we're the explosive dustbin men. You know, you've got to have these guys around to keep the, keep the place tidy. And a uh, few uh, of my friends say, well, it's giving the wrong image, but you know what I mean. It's, it's the, it, we just give a service to uh, 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 the explosive dustbin men. Can you tell me about the difficulties of perhaps training someone in, in this work? Um, well, uh, it starts way back. Uh, one of the things that we think is essential to uh, a fellow who's going to risk his neck is the fact that he's got some experience. He's got to have a bit of age on his side, and with it, we hope, a bit of experience. Um, more recently, in the last couple of years, we've um, uh, looked more at the chap as a person, and uh, we've had um, uh, processes um, developed to make sure we've got the right type of fellow um, to go and, uh, and do the work. Uh, his academic training depends entirely on uh, the situation as it stands now. We train them just before they go, or when I say train them, we, we um, put the polish on them just before they go across to, to Ireland and therefore they get the up to the minute scene. What's, what's, what's the necessary temperament for a bomb disposal officer? I think he's got to have a fair amount of patience. I think he's got to be pretty patient. Um, I think he's got to be able to shut off great uh, sort of areas of possible concern of his, you know, about the rates and the taxes and the gas bill being paid and that sort of thing. I think you've got to shut that off. Um, you've got to be able to do that and just concentrate on, on the job in hand. Concentration is important, I think, and, and uh, acad a few academic disciplines, you know, so that you don't make a mistake on something fundamental. It must be very lonely when you're looking at a bomb. You have the chap on his own, you know, in the dark, in that cold, dark street. It's always cold, it seems to be. It's always dark, it seems to be, even though it's daylight, you know. And uh, you're always very lonely. And that's right, because um, there's no sense in two people going. Do you ever feel fear? I suppose, um, I'm on record as saying no, um, but I suppose you do. You feel fear. I personally feel fear afterwards. You 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 go back in retrospect, and uh, and then you get fearful. But at the time, um, I think you've got so much on hand. You've got so much. You're doing so much. There's there, there are tremendous pressures on you. Uh, pressures from the front, from the thing that you're facing, and pressures behind from the the way of life, uh, we want to get this street open or we want to get on with the thing, you know, we've had trains held up outside stations, we've had traffic rerouted, we have people standing in the rain trying to keep people back. You've got this tremendous environmental pressure uh, and I think there's so much going on that you don't physically feel fear. I mean, it's a, it's a possibly a cliche, but I mean, when you approach a bomb, do, do you think of uh, in fearful terms of your family, or, or do you think of, of what? Or what do you fear for? 
Or is it just yourself you're fearful? Well, you haven't got time. As I've said before, you haven't got time to go through all this now. Have I paid the gas bill or the telephone bill or, you know, what about my wife, you know, is the insurance due and so on. Um, you haven't got time for that. Um, at the moment that you've got a job to do, you've got to do it. You've got to do your best. And you ultimately, of course, you've got the highest um, bill to pay if you don't do your best. Do you feel responsible when one of the people you've trained um, gets killed in a bomb explosion? Well, it's never pleasant, um, never pleasant at all. In fact, um, uh, I get an intense feeling of anger um, at the loss of uh, somebody that's worth uh, to society, to, to everybody, uh, the, the, the tremendous loss, and, and particularly to me, the loss, uh, always a companion, um, a guy that's trying his best. You know, this is a tremendous anger feeling inside me, but um, I would like um, to, to assure you that we find out the reason for things. Um, some people say, well, is it logic? It isn't quite logic, but there it must be a reason for things happening. Uh, and you can rest assured that um, every guy that we have lost, we have analyzed as best we can the reason for him going. Um, we have trimmed our sails, altered our course. We have done whatever we can, whatever is humanly possible to ensure that we don't lose another guy for the same reason. I remember once you telling me about this, perhaps the most humorous but macabre incident you ran into Belfast uh, concerning a cat. Can, can you tell me again about that? Yeah, yeah that's the, the seal-pointed Siamese cat in the York Hotel in Botanic Avenue. We had a man in an armoured suit, perspiring, lying behind a sandbagged Travis operating on the end of a 12-foot aluminium pole, a special little device that we concocted to lift a bomb and move it sideways and put it into a steel sledge so that we could withdraw this thing uh, from this small hotel. Now, it didn't go as easy as that. I mean, there were one or two full starts and so on. And on the first uh, manoeuvre, he had got the pole depressed and therefore the bomb elevated and there it was suspended. But unfortunately, we got the fulcrum in the wrong position and he could no way get this thing high enough to get it into the sledge. Incidentally, the sledge had been built by the sappers from a... Uh, Belfast Corporation rubbish uh, <laughs> receptacle, but that's another story. Anyway, the bomb was then suspended, this guy perspiring, uncle watching with binoculars. Uncle is uh, you. Uncle's, uh, you, you know, <coughs> shouting the instructions, you know, hold it, and the guy's sort of swearing back because he can't see because he's so hot. And down the stairs of this dreadful hotel came a seal-pointed Siamese cat. And the first thing the damn cat did was to sit under this bomb and start patting it, swinging it on the thing. Now, my reaction was to grab the ashtray and throw it at the cat. But I thought, you know, you're not such a good shot as that, you might hit the bomb. And bear in mind that this bomb had in it a travelling alarm clock uh, with the hand hard up to the contact wire. And the only thing that stopped it going bang was probably a molecule of, of dust uh, between the hand and the bridge wire. And so the slightest vibration or jar or whatever in this situation could have set the thing off. No danger to the guy with the pole, but all sorts of strife to the rest of us. So <laughs> the situation was quickly resolved. I made a noise like a dog. <laughs> and the cat fled for its life, Bob. And the bomb was safely taken. And the bomb was safely taken out. How good as bomb makers are, let, 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 let us say, the IRA? Um. 
Well, they're as good as Guy Fawkes was. And he was the first and, uh, I reckon, the foremost bomb maker. Uh, they're, they're, they're all of the same skill. Uh, anybody that um, turns his mind to manufacturing a bomb is in the same class, in my view. Um, he is uh, a guy that's using uh, uh, the ultimate in uh, instant energy um, in a most destructive and, and terrorist way. Uh, IRA bomb makers are the same as Chinese bomb makers, as Arab bomb makers, as any bomb maker. Uh, I don't think there are any degrees of skill in it, although although uh, the IRA have been acknowledged, I believe, by uh, terrorist transnational uh, as the leaders of the bomb makers today in the 70s. Uh, if this is so, well, then perhaps we can take some comfort from it. Now, you've been, you've been dealing in bombs, and I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that you're probably the, the leading bomb expert in the world and you've been dealing with them for a long time how, how have you remained unscathed and undead well the cat walks quietly in the night uh, he has nine lives and he's a very cautious animal uh, and that's probably why we adopted the uh, code word Felix for our operations I think you have to be cautious, um, and I try and uh, make people cautious. I think one of uh, the BBC reporters, Martin Bell, on a dark street in Belfast one night, uh, when he watched us play around a bomb for about 30 minutes, and then there was a tremendous explosion, uh, and a car was flung across the street, and the building sort of partially collapsed and glass rushed out of uh, windows and I think it was Martin I might be doing him a disservice he came up and he said in this dark cold night he said excuse me I'm from the BBC he said uh, why did you take so long uh, about this operation uh, and I said to him well you never hurry to a funeral <laughs> Greatest bread and veg. How many? One. One. How about that? Yes. But from the world of bombs, George oh, Stiles and his wife have moved to the mundane British. business of changing from an army house to a civilian home, their first, and accounting for all their official equipment. S, dear. It goes in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D, E. S, S. Don't get me confused.